Once upon a time, there was a man named Phineas Gage. I mean, it wasn't just once upon a time, per se. It was 1848, and it was Vermont. But I'm trying to set the mood here, so go with me. Phineas was a railroad worker. Back in those days, if you wanted to get through a giant boulder or cliff, you did it by drilling a hole in the rock, filling it with gunpowder and a fuse, then filling the rest of the hole with sand, and finally, packing it all down nice and tight with a heavy metal rod. Well, on this particular day, Phineas got distracted. Yoo-hoo! And forgot to put in the sand. When Phineas smashed the iron rod into the hole, it made a spark, which ignited the gunpowder. The explosion blasted the iron rod upward, right through Phineas's brain, and then fell back to earth some distance from his body, which was lying on the ground just completely still alive. Amazingly, Phineas Gage recovered and lived another 12 years, which back then, you know, 12 years is nothing to sneeze at, guys. Except the townsfolk said that Phineas Gage's personality had changed. They said he had become moody and crude, that he used foul language he'd never used before. They were forced to conclude that he was, and I quote, not the same Gage. Oh, and here's the iron rod that went through his head, if you were curious. Looks like they worked things out. So, why are we really talking today about Phineas Gage? Because damaging his brain didn't just hurt Phineas, it changed Phineas. And the truth is, there are a lot of ways to change our brains. Ways that don't require explosions to get inside. A lot of times, we invite them in ourselves. And once they're in, they rewire the way we think. And just like Phineas Gage's iron bar, that rewiring can change us in very fundamental ways. Look, porn is going to affect different people in different ways, and we're not here today to talk about whether porn is evil or whether it should be outlawed. We're simply asking, what does porn do to you? How does it affect your health and happiness? Because there are plenty of people in the world throughout history eager to mislead you about whether something can hurt you. For example, let's take a look at what they used to sell on the old frontier when you had a toothache. There you go. Yes, that does say cocaine. And yes, those are little kids in the picture. One drop of this and you won't care about that toothache anymore. You won't even care whether you have teeth. Or how about this one? Yep, you read that right. Asthma cigarettes effectively treats asthma, hay fever, and foul breath. That's what your English teachers refer to as irony, kids. But hey, it's not all bad. Look, at least they're not giving them to five-year-olds. The point is this. Sometimes science has to catch up with the truth. And even then, it often takes a while for the rest of us to catch up with science. From the global resources of ABC News, this is Nightline. Pornography. Hollywood's X-rated cousin is a $12 billion American industry. There are an estimated 370 million pornographic websites on the Internet. Pornography is becoming as easy to find as fast food. Porn is easier to access than ever. Just like with those companies of the last century, there is a massive effort in the multi-billion dollar porn industry today to convince you that porn is harmless, even good for you. But slowly and steadily, science is catching up with the truth that the effects of porn are far more substantial than what you're being led to believe. It's a rewiring process. We call it neuroplastic process. Just as plastic is changeable and malleable, we can change the shape of the brain. That's Dr. Donald L. Hilton, Jr. He's a neurosurgeon and is an adjunct associate professor of neurosurgery at the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio. That is a mouthful, but listen to him because he's a smart guy. According to him, your brain is what, what's that word again? Malleable. Okay, so what he's saying is that your brain is less like this and more like this. Well, if you want to get all literal about it, your brain's actually more like this. That's tofu for all you carnivores out there. That's what they say your brain feels like. But we're not talking about texture. We're talking about the fact that your brain is, you know, constantly changing and molding itself. Neuroscientists call it plasticity, meaning everything you want, everything you need, everything you do causes your brain to make little pathways and connections inside itself so it can do it faster next time. Learn an instrument. Play a sport. Learn to do the Charleston. Here's the point. Your brain can change itself. It can be a different brain today than it was yesterday. We can train our brain in something and then 
grow that area, which means we have more capacity in that area um, to process incoming stimuli. So if you train a lot of math, your brain area um, responsible for math calculation is going to grow and you're going to get better at this. That's Dr. Kuhn of the Max Planck Institute for Human Development in Berlin. Or for you German speakers out there, the Max Planck Institute für Bildungsforschung, Dieber. <coughs> Anyway, she's going to tell us what all this plasticity talk has to do with porn. Everything that we do each and every day shapes our brain to the thing that it is. So if I really like sports, I will have brain regions dedicated for swimming and stuff. If I, on the other hand, watch a lot of porn, I will train my brain regions responsible for porn processing a lot more. Wow, a brain trained to process porn. I suppose someone could hear that and think it sounded pretty cool, but... So, let's get into specifics here. Let's talk about the first major way porn can rewire your brain. Everyone knows that images can hold enormous power. They can change our whole concept of beauty, body type, and what we consider normal. But why is that? Nicholas Tinbergen was a biologist who received the Nobel Prize in the 1970s. He's most famous for coining the term supernormal stimulus which is really just a fancy way of describing something that is bigger and greater than what someone would see in their normal, everyday, natural lives. In one of his most famous experiments, he took butterflies where the males were attracted to the color, pattern, and shape of the female's wings. He then made cardboard butterfly wings, and he painted them brighter and, and made them bigger than nature ever would. So, get this, and this is a real story, the male butterflies tried to mate with the cardboard. In fact, even when females were present, the males would ignore them and stay focused on the cardboard. That's kind of insane, right? What Tinbergen discovered about the brain was that it could be manipulated by doing the following. First, figure out what stimulates the brain. Second, create an exaggerated version. And third, the brain will often come to prefer the exaggerated version. It's important to remember that this is a biological discovery about the way the brain, any brain, works, whether it belongs to a butterfly or a human. Don't believe me? Back in the day, this is the amount of sugar in the average diet. This is the amount today. Pretty stark difference, huh? What about what fashion dolls look like 50 years ago? This is what they look like today. This is what an action figure looked like in the 80s. Here's what they look like today. Wow, they've got muscles on their muscles. You see, Wherever we have the opportunity to exaggerate what stimulates or entices us, we take it. But remember the third final piece of Tinbergen's discovery. Eventually, we prefer the supernormal stimuli and we ignore what's normal for what's exaggerated. A new phenomenon is happening in which I've tried to sound an alarm because it's not temporary, it's not a phase. Young men and women's lives are being ruined by excessive pornography. That's Dr. Philip Zimbardo of Stanford University. For the last few years, his research has focused on the psychological impact of gaming and pornography on today's rising generation. Porn has these adverse effects because it's captivating, it's enchanting. You're focusing, you're focusing on this screen right here, uh, and you're eliminating everything else in the universe. And I've said everything else in the universe is called life. Hijacking is a great way to put it because when you hijack something, you take it from going where it's supposed to go and send it to someplace else. That's Dr. William Struthers. He's a professor of psychology and neuroscience at Wheaton College in Illinois. He teaches a course on the biological basis of behavior. Uh, a neurological system that is designed to go to a place where two people are bound to one another, you're now redirecting it so that their sexuality is binding them to something other than that relationship. We've come now to the single most well-known topic when it comes to pornography. This word, addiction. It's what most people expect in a presentation about porn. Especially, porn in the brain. There is compelling academic research that confirms pornography addiction is every bit as real as drug addiction. And some question whether addiction is the best word to describe it. But what is not in dispute are the hundreds of thousands of people in the world right now experiencing what they feel is an uncontrollable need for porn. Again, we're not saying that everyone is impacted by porn in the same way. We're just sharing real people's experiences and what real studies have shown. So what it basically comes down to are these two major parts of your brain. The reward center 
and the prefrontal cortex. Let's talk about the reward center first. Stay with me here and get a little sciency. We have a dopamine factory in this very primitive old part of our brain and it sends brain wires up to this reward area and it literally powers the brain with desire. So basically everything that people seek to pursue is something that is driven by the reward center. That lower reward part of your brain is not unique to humans. It wants what every mammal wants. To live, to reproduce, to be comfortable. Think of all the things in life you love to do. Yep, it's that reward part of your brain that seeks those things. That's why they feel good. So now let's talk about the upper part. And then we have the prefrontal cortex on the other side that basically regulates these reward-seeking structures. If the lower part of your brain is something you share with every mammal, the upper part is what makes you human. When you think, when you reason, when you weigh the consequences, you're using that upper part of your brain. Normally, the prefrontal cortex keeps the reward center in check. The reward center says, I want to eat an entire pizza. The prefrontal cortex says, maybe I should just have a couple slices. The reward center says, I want to sleep until noon. The prefrontal cortex says, if I keep missing school, I won't graduate. The point is, the relationship can change between these two when we view porn. In a sense, if the brain is a car, that frontal executive system is a brake. And it's like the brake pads wear out with addiction. They don't work as well. The brain doesn't stop as well. It just whines. We basically illustrate that the more pornography people watch, the less strong the link is between the reward system and the prefrontal cortex. And um, pretty much my hypothesis was that the ventral striatum and the reward uh, region should be bigger in those people watching pornography. And it's exactly the other way around. So, um... Will you shock? Yes, yes. <laughs> When you're deep in the trenches of viewing pornography, stopping it is going to be really, really difficult. The pornography that you're watching is usually meeting some need in your life. So one of the ways that you can really speed up in the recovery process is that you can find better ways to meet those needs. It's like eating a Snickers bar when your body really needs a salad. So replacing what you've been putting into your body with what is actually needed is actually going to make you be healthy. Even with the most severe drug addictions, studies have shown that the brain can recover. An interesting study showed that with a year or two of recovery, these shrunken areas actually enlarged again, back to more normal volumes. So we know the brain heals. We've actually been able to visualize recovery. No matter how dark or depressed, your brain has the power to heal and return itself to the healthy, happy functioning state you crave. Phineas had to live with his injury for the rest of his life, but the effects of pornography don't have to be permanent. Here's the real question though. If porn really does rewire the brain in unhealthy ways, then what are the consequences of so many people watching it? Last year, over four billion hours of porn were viewed on one website. Four billion, with a B. How will all that porn affect the viewers? How will it affect their boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, and families? How will it affect the world? The brain, the heart, the world. These are the three parts of our message. And it all starts here, with the brain. Defend your brain, treasure it. That's the first step. You were born with a machine in your head more powerful and with more potential than the world's fastest computer all dedicated to the survival and happiness of you and the ones you love. Your magnificent, mind-boggling brain. Take care of it. It was made to take care of you.
Hi, my name is Clay Olson, the co-founder and president of Fight the New Drug. We hope that you enjoyed episode one, The Brain, where we explore the harmful effects of pornography for individuals. If you or somebody that you know is struggling with pornography, you got to know that there is hope that recovery is real. And uh, to learn more about how to overcome this or to help somebody that's struggling with this, you can learn more at joinfortify.com slash FTND. Or you can download the free Fortify app on the App Store. Literally hundreds of thousands of people are using this tool from over 155 countries around the world to uh, gain practical strategies, to connect with other people on this pathway to freedom, as well as track patterns and overall outcomes. Uh, bottom line, you don't have to do this alone. Thanks for watching.